Hey, Mr. Baldwin, we're back talking about minerals. This time we're going to talk about mineral extraction. Awesome. So we're going to be getting stuff out of the ground. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what are our learning targets today? Uh, you guys should be able to explain how minerals are extracted from the ground. So how we get minerals out of the ground. And uh, you're going to evaluate the costs and benefits of mineral extraction. So kind of like we're doing in the lab with the cookie mining, only this is going to be the real thing with real mines for real big bucks. Yeah, a lot of money at yeah, this one. Yeah, right. And hopefully real big buck returns for the mining companies. Perfect. Okay, we're ready to move on. Cool. So we have a video that we want to show you. It's a quick video, and it talks about sustainable mining. And if you think back to the very beginning of the first economic geology slide segment, we mm -hmm. talked about sustainability a little bit. So let's see what sustainability means specific to mining. Absolutely. Cool. All right, here we go. The whole idea of sustainable mining is that you are projecting 15, 20 years, however long that mining operation is going to take place, you're already projecting into the end state what that end state is going to be. The regulatory regime that's in place will only uh, get stricter. Most of the companies that are now beginning these operations, if they can do better than what the regulatory requirements are, they're not only planning for the future, they're also in many cases finding economic efficiencies that they wouldn't, they wouldn't have found otherwise. The idea behind sustainable mining is that you would be able to extract the mineral resources from, from, uh, from the earth without harming the, the environment. It's really trying to say that we can do mining in a uh, way that is sustainable and that it doesn't have uh, such environmental effects that it becomes a negative in society. Not only does it make good environmental sense, it also makes really good economic sense. The cost to remediate, if you look at what those costs are as you're designing the mine, working with the Saskatchewan Research Council and, and the experts that we can bring to the table, then you're going to be able to reduce what, it, what your footprint's going to be and what your remediation costs are going to be. And in fact, in many cases, uh, helping, your, helping reduce the cost of your operation, not just your remediation costs. The point of it is to try to maximize the processing and try to get the most value out of that out of the out of the minerals that are there in terms of the products but at the same time trying to reduce the amount of uh, water that's used in the process and thereby the amount of tailings and the amount of uh, effluent that's coming uh, out of the process because ultimately those uh, those tailings and the effluents have to be disposed of or contained in some way Sustainable mining is, is about minimizing the, uh, the footprint that, that a mining operation will have on the ground. It's, it's never, uh, we'll never get to a point where there is, it's eliminated, but it's really about minimizing that footprint. So Mr. Baldwin, before we go on, let's talk about a couple of vocabulary words that they used in the video, because I think things like effluent mm -hmm. might be a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. So when they said that, they were talking about after they've extracted the ore from the rock material, right? Yeah. And they're primarily talking about water that's okay. used in the process. Yeah, because they use a lot of water in mining, don't they? In some of the processes of, of separating the ore from the rock. So separating the ore from the... The effluent. Yeah. Okay. Well, the water is the effluent. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So there's a problem with some of that water. It's contaminated. Okay. And that's what they're talking about with concerns about it being sustainable is the contamination in the effluent water. Gotcha, okay. okay. They also talked about tailings, didn't they? They talked about tailings, what are those? Uh, tailings, was that like kind of the rubbish or like what they were like left over with after they got the, yeah. the ore? Do you remember from segment one we had that term gang? Yeah. That's the gang. Okay, right. so the gang is just the extra stuff that's not the ore that we want. Not the valuable ore, cool. exactly. So. Um, Tying this back into the lab, the cookie mining lab, but also thinking forward to the project that students are going to be doing, mm -hmm. they'll be focusing on a specific group of ores, and that group of ores is probably going to have one or two different types of mining or extraction methods that are going to be dominant to recover those or to extract them. So okay. this is a good overview of all the different types of extraction methods, okay. but students are going to be digging in a little bit more deeply. Oh, oh, that was man, really bad. Sorry. <laughs> They're going to be digging in a little bit more deeply as they go into their particular chosen ore group for the project. Okay, cool. So we're going to be learning a little bit about the different ways that we can start digging up these ores then, right? right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about surface mining, mm -hmm. 
really bad news. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about soft and hard rock underground mining. Okay. And we'll talk about some deep sea extractions, oh, which are cool. becoming more and more popular. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's look on to the next slide. Okay. So surface mining seems like it's just mining at the surface, right? We're somewhat just digging. Yeah. Okay. So I see the strip mining, it's removal of a seam. When I think of a seam, I think of something like kind of a long like seam on a coat or something. Mm -hmm. Um, Good analogy. Yeah, and like as you can see in the picture, there's kind of a seam of that black layer that's running right across here, yeah. and it looks like that's what they're trying to dig up maybe. It's just a seam of their ore that they want to extract. Mm -hmm. So this is a really great picture to look at because you see how thin the black layer of coal is in relationship to the thickness of this entire sequence of rocks. All they're after are those very narrow, very dark bands of coal. So another term for surface mining is strip mining. And I think it got that name because many times they go in and they strip away okay. everything that's at the surface mm -hmm. to get to these coal layers or coal seams okay. that are relatively close to the surface. But in getting to that coal, they strip away all the vegetation and all the topsoil. Oh, so like trees, soil, animals, and then a little bit of rock on top? All gone. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that sounds like it's a lot of a lot of destruction. Yeah, in another section we're going to talk about problems with the environment due to these kinds of mining operations. Okay. So let's go on and talk a little bit more about another type of surface mining, which is open pit mining. Okay. Not the barbecue sauce. No, oh, okay. I was just okay. about to bring that up. Yeah. So this one seems like it's the one we're most familiar with. You're digging a big hole, right? Exactly. Okay. So this one, the ore deposits are still near the surface, and basically you're digging down until you're done with the ore, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So as you can see in the picture, they kind of dig, and it looks like they've got kind of a ring around the whole thing. They've got, like, roads that are kind of driving their way up, mm -hmm. and they're just digging down and down and down and then yeah. out and out and out. Right. Okay. So for scale, if you look at some of the picture here, this and this are oh probably either big trucks that are uses, used to offload the ore, or there's some kind of steam shovel digger kind of. Oh my gosh, that's huge. But they're very, very big. So this may actually be half a mile or a mile across. Wow. Those and they mines have, are big. And they have these in Illinois too, don't they? There's one uh, just south of the city of Thornton Quarry. Mm -hmm. It's a big open pit mine. Mm -hmm. Cool. You can sure. actually see it when you drive across I-80. You can. Cool. That's true. All right, next slide. The mountaintop removal mining. This sounds pretty self-explanatory. They remove the top of a mountain. Yeah. Okay. Um, kind of like that strip, or the strip mining that we saw, where you're taking off all the vegetation, you're taking off the rock, and then you're trying to get one small part of the mine, right? Right. Or the ore. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not... Can we oh. go back to that one? I'm not real sure how you guys feel about this scene, but it looks like this was kind of a hilly area mm -hmm. with a lot of forest, a lot of vegetation, and it doesn't look so pretty anymore to me. It looks like they just blasted away and washed away. I yeah. think some of the technique is they'll actually take a hose and they'll wash off the side of a mountain to try and get to some of the ore. Mm -hmm. If you're a big uh, college sports fan, Western Kentucky, their mascot's the Hilltoppers, and uh, basically it's just a big mountainside is their mascot. Okay. Okay, so now we're going underground. We're digging tunnels, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So this one, it's hard rock mining, and usually we're looking at things like rocks that are hard or that are solid, a little yes. bit more difficult to remove, I assume, right. right? So we're looking at things where we're removing the heavy metals, like gold, iron, silver, okay. or platinum, palladium group, nickel, lead, tin, zinc, copper. Okay. Some diamonds, because diamonds are mined in some cases from underground. Sometimes okay. they're mined from plaster deposits. Okay. But these are the dig the tunnel, mm -hmm. support it with the wooden beams. In this case, you can see they've got railroad tracks running through oh, here, okay. so they might be bringing equipment in, mm -hmm. or they might be taking carts of ore up out of that mine. Okay. But this is the underground mining, okay. typically used for those metals. Okay. And then the next type, soft rock. So this one's going to be a little bit softer materials or minerals. They got coal, tar, sand, salt, gypsum, shale. Mm -hmm. um, probably a little bit more difficult because it's soft rock, right? Mm -hmm. So do you think they have problems with like cave-ins and, you know, basically ruining the whole mine? Mine safety is definitely a concern. Yeah. Right. And think about some of the cases where we've heard about coal mine collapses, both mm -hmm. in the U.S. and in other countries. There was that Chilean mine collapse a couple years back. That was a real serious deal. Yeah. And out in like Virginia, they have a lot of coal mines that uh, start to fall apart mm -hmm. after a while. China as well. 
So globally, this is an issue and a problem. Okay. Yeah. Oh, deep sea deep mining. Deep sea mining. This sounds pretty cool. Mining underwater, right? Mining underwater. So cool. So they're not actually sending miners down. Okay. Most of it's being done remotely. So here you can see in the picture, they are doing shipboard work, and they're dropping down sometimes over a mile wow. of cable and penetrating the seafloor. And then they have various ways of recovering using a grabber, using remotely operated vehicles to extract that material. Here's a dragnet, lots of different ways of extracting the material depending on what it is that they're actually trying to mine from the seafloor. But some very recent deposits of mm -hmm. rare earth elements and other extremely valuable ores have been identified on the seafloor. They're oh, very deep, okay. and there is some problem with who actually owns those because they seem to be in international waters. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of controversy <coughs> about these types of ores and this type of mining operation, both environmentally, economically, and, and politically. Yeah. So I think we're going to hear a lot more about deep sea mining in the future. Okay. All right, so for your mastery check on this one, you're going to go to your class webpage and check out the quiz. Submit that, and uh, hopefully you'll have a, a good time doing that. Piece of cake. Make sure to go back to the video. If you want to watch it while you're taking the quiz, absolutely watch it while you take the quiz. Get 100%. Good. All right. See you guys later. Bye.